Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, this is your Bedroom Super Producer Podcast. Welcome back. We are your hosts. My name is JT. My name is BK. And uh, today we have uh, another great episode for you guys. Might be on the uh, shorter side as we uh, delved very, very deeply into the matter of the robots, these French dudes who make uh, awesome funk, disco, house, whatever you want to call it. And this week we're uh, crossing back the Atlantic and we are going to visit Virginia. That's right, Virginia. Who are we visiting? We, uh, we will be looking at the career of uh, some hip-hop, funk, R&B legends. We've already covered Timbo, and so it was only fair for us to talk about the Neptunes. Damn right, the Neptunes. And um, to start things off, BK, I want to ask you a tough question. Tough question. All right. What's the tough got question? A bit of a, got a bit of a curveball for you today, BK. Okay, Don't know you... if you could, uh, you can handle my, uh, either my curve or my split finger fastball with this one. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sure I can handle it. What is happening with Chad Hugo? Oh, that's a bit of a curveball. Like in 2020? I mean, for me, it's been almost a decade now. Something weird has happened to the Neptunes and especially to their member who's uh, more of a fan of the uh, behind the scenes. Indeed, indeed. Uh, great curveball. Honestly, I don't really know what's going on with chat. I know what I do know is that he's staying home with his family these days. That's what I know. I... Uh, I was really, really trying to find some new stuff because obviously I think I'm a bigger fan of Chad's than I am a fan of Pharrell. Well, we're a fan of the, the combination of what they're doing together. Exactly. Because yeah. uh, honestly, whenever Pharrell produces by himself, I don't know, to me it feels incomplete. It, it's not the same magic as mm, true. whenever F Chad's uh, in the picture. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I like a good conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was listening to some uh, more recent interviews. Especially there's a one with uh, Rome USA Media. So if the listeners want to wanna help me out with this one, you can type in, in the YouTube, R-O-M-U-S-A. And then there's this guy... Uh, interviewing Chad right before one of his uh, uh, DJ sets and there's something odd about uh, Chad's um, speech as well as his I don't know if you could call it is uh, something is wrong with the way his mouth moves something is wrong with the, the way his eyes move and I'm I'm thinking there's more to the whole Chad Hugo staying home with this family thing. I don't know. Um, it's a great, great question. It's true that he's always been behind the scenes, that we have to admit. But um, I haven't really looked into what he's been doing like recently, but you're really right that He's been really off off the scene. We haven't really heard anything about him. Um, even their 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 band, the NERD stuff, we haven't in, we haven't heard too much uh, about it recently. Uh, like you said, it's mostly mostly Pharrell Williams that's out there, um, be it working with Daft Punk or other artists. So I have to give the that knuckleball back to you. You're right. Uh, couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. Didn't have the answer to the questions. There's another interview that really caught my attention. And it is a more recent podcast. I think it was uh, recorded like three years ago. 
and it's on this uh, channel called I Am Other, and it's I think it, the the sh the show is called Other Tone. That's what my research uh, allowed me to figure out. And um, in this roundtable, there's Chad Hugo, Pharrell Williams, Tyler the Creator, two guys I I had never seen or heard in my life, and then there's Justin Timberlake. Mm -hmm. And in this podcast, they are talking about you know the good old days. Uh, they went back as far as Justified, the first uh, Justin Timberlake album where uh, the Neptunes produced like the major singles. Mm -hmm. And in this podcast, you can also tell that there's something really, really off with Cha Hugo. And just for the listeners out there, uh, understand that I'm I'm concerned with his health. That's my biggest concern. Um, again. He's not as lively as the old interviews. I, I'm sure you remember the uh, the interview where Chad gives us a tour of the Virginia studio, yeah, the where studio, he plays yeah. the where he plays the uh, the hovercraft, the micro the, mi the micro Korg, uh, sitting on top of an ASR10, and uh, that, that, that's like the the most important uh, I would say interview for the Neptunes. Uh, in the good old uh, collaboration days, if you will. True. And, and, and going back to that other tone interview, um, it's almost as if Chad's uh, speech is slurred. And so uh, if anyone knows anything, uh, you can comment once this uh, podcast is on YouTube. I'm, I'm really curious and uh, quite concerned, actually, because, again, like... Around 2010, 2011 is when, you know, they kind of fell off. And that's where really Pharrell started to be kind of a, an artist, really. Mm -hmm. uh, they started doing way, way more personal stuff, way more solo stuff. Yeah, totally Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, um, I'll go back to uh, our regular format. Now, um, what's your... Uh, when did you first hear... The Neptunes. Uh, Neptunes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think it's pretty far back. I'm going to say first track I heard, um, probably Old Dirty Bastard, Got Your Money, featuring Kellis mm. back in yeah. 99, I think. 98, 99, right. something like that. That was the first like Neptune song that I, I heard. You? Late 90s is really where they started to make some bigger waves. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think that I would say the first song I remember sounding different was Kellis's I Hate You So Much Right Now. I can't remember if that's the, the actual title of the song, but that's certainly what she says in the chorus. Okay. But uh, I really became curious and started to, to search online for who was singing those yeah. like weird falsetto hooks and the <laughs> beats that had always the same drums. Yeah. And that would be I Just Want to Love You by uh, uh, Jay-Z off of the, the Dynasty yeah. album. Yeah. That's, that's, that's when I figured there's something to these songs. They're, like I said, they always have the same drums. Yeah. There's always this weird guy singing the hooks. Uh, like this either or uh mystic Al's, uh shake your ass okay like yeah, that yeah i think they pretty much came out uh, around the same time and and that's where i hit the internet and really tried to figure out who these guys were and and then from there i i i, I saw the body of work uh that had already piled up if you will yeah yeah right totally right they have they have like so many hits it's even uh it's even difficult to to understand how 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 they could have done all all that that work and all that those great tracks, I I know right. I was looking at the uh, the the production it's discography like, on the. It's uh, infinite. It's infinite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I they they, they like worked on fifty to hundred songs every year from nineteen ninety six ninety seven to yeah. all the way up until now. Really, yeah. Where where I I mean after twenty eleven it was pretty much like 75% Pharrell and 25% Chad, as mm -hmm. far as I could tell. Mm -hmm. But that, yeah. I think there was even a point 
I think like for me, their peak was probably like 2000, 2003, 2004. And I remember in 2003, 2004, I think like probably a third or half of everything you were hearing on like the top, ch the charts on the billboard was them. Like literally like maybe 40% of the tracks, it was like, it was a bit disconcerting to see that all these songs were there were were theirs you know be it uh front frontin or uh, snoop dogg stuff uh, the clips hot damn uh you know buster rhyme stuff it's like everything like the radio was almost owned by them in 2003 <laughs> yeah it was absolutely it, yeah to, to my knowledge it's the, it's the biggest hit run uh, in the game, oh, like yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't know of any other producer who, who for for ten years yeah. stayed on the the Hot 100 like they did. Yeah, exactly. I did a bit of a, I did a bit of digging, and they actually had, listen to this, twenty four Billboard Hot 100 top ten hits. Wow! In that in that decade, twenty that decade alone. That's like almost impossible. Like you're lucky if you have one. <laughs> At their top, it was said that they would um, charge up to 150K per song. Wow. So if you do the math, imagine that they, they produce, I don't know, 20 of those a year, plus all of the other songs, plus all of the royalties. Yeah. I mean, that keeps uh, on coming, plus the, the playwrights and everything. It must be that's, like uh, pretty intense. That's that's a whole lot of uh, industry money, if you ask me. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my next question would be for you: What would be the most revolutionary work that they've done? Favorite song or like revolutionary work? Uh, I, I will say revolutionary. Because to me, to me, that's really what the Neptunes are about. It's about pushing the boundaries and really not being afraid is what I uh, remember for the from the good old days of the Neptunes. True. For me, it's kind of a difficult question because they've always found a way to stay true to their sound while tailoring their work to the artists they weren't doing the opposite. Usually when you have a producer that has this very specific sound, he always uses his own sound and his like his own vibe and he applies it to the artist. They did like the, the opposite. They always found a way to, to make Jay-Z sound like Jay-Z, to make Justin Timberlake sound like himself and not the other way around while still retaining the fact that you heard the song and you're like, oh, that's the Neptunes. I think in a way it was probably why they reused the, the drum sounds all the time, you know, because it like it was very like a personal sound uh, for for their style. Um, so I'm gonna have to go. Probably for me, the song that I thought was very like that had innovation and that kind of defined. A year, I'm gonna go with probably drop it like it's hot. Ooh, because for me those sounds, uh, the chord choices, um, the the percussion choices, the the sound design, it was like no one did that. No one did that. I think no one would have dared to use <laughs> those sound and that 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 mouthy sound for the clap and a straight 808 it was it's, it's very it's very empty as a song but it works it's got this this cadence almost this kind of a, like an african cadence or just it makes me makes you want to dance and it's like for me it's very new shit i don't know oh yeah what, for sure what do you think i mean it, it, it certainly made my list of revolutionary tracks hey by the way did you know that the the the, the little snoo Thing actually came from a, a synth sample from an old eighties record. Wow! Uh, I didn't know. So if, if if you look it up on, again on YouTube, 
Uh, type in Laidbacks's White Horse. And at first I didn't quite catch it. But if you listen to the synth sound that goes up in pitch and then listen back to Drop It Like It's Hot, you can absolutely tell that they kept the sample. They just sung over the, uh, the synth sample. So okay. <laughs> I was really... Wow. I always thought it was just like great songwriting, but it's it's actually a sample yeah, somehow. Sample. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's always fun. I to, mean, it's always fun to hear those little stories of how a sound was made, and it fascinates me. Yeah, and it's a, it's always a, a a lot simpler than one would uh, uh, you know try to 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 think of. Sometimes you 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 see your childhood heroes as uh, these invincible heroes, and and when you 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 realize that they just do like we do is we they get inspired just as much by other people as we do uh it's quite uh comforting in a way <laughs> they, they also go pretty fast you know you, you see that uh good producers and good artists are not afraid to work on different things at the same time because they know that they're in this specific zone and they try not to get stuck on a particular idea and to to like to always go over it and over it and over it they understand that they have to they have to be fast and they have to use that creative moment like right now that, that you probably lose something and like as we were talking last week sometimes you get frozen by all the options and i think the greatest producers out there they know how to do stuff very fast and they understand when they have something magical or they don't have something magical and they just like start something new instead of getting stuck into the same loop for for endless days. Yeah, well, for sure they didn't have uh, an issue with uh, creative block or anything like that. Because uh, with their with their run, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. Yeah, of course. What about you? I want. Well, what, what's your before uh, I answer? Track? I, I I wanted to go back to your point uh, about them really tailoring their sound to the artists. And I always wondered actually why they used the same drum kit, drum kit on every track. And I, I, I mean, by listening to your answer, I mean, maybe it was more of a branding thing. That's what I'm saying. You know, if you're... Uh, to you. and, and I mean, if that's the case, it's genius. Timbaland also did that with his little high-pitched 808 snare. Yeah, and I mean, at that time, in the early two thousands, if you if the listeners could not tell who the beat was produced by, just by hearing the drums, you kind of did not have your own sound, right? Exactly. Nowadays, uh, I mean, everybody's got the same eight hundred eight drums, so that's that trend is kind of uh, dead. But I, I really liked. This idea that if you found, you know, this really, really unique snare or kick sound, it could potentially build your whole image as a producer. And I, I mean, I, I still try to live by that rule, unwritten rule, that your drums ha kind of have to speak for themselves somehow. Mm. Yeah, yeah, true. But uh, going back to revolutionary work, and obviously it is a tough one with the Neptunes because they... Uh, they really, really broke the mold <laughs> several times, but I'll ha I'll have to say grinding is when oh, I really the clips is, the clips yeah yeah wow. yeah the clips uh, I mean you you uh, mentioned the uh, goddamn or goddamn I still don't know what they if it if, what what they're saying in the in, in the lyrics but yeah I mean grinding was uh, pretty much one of those all drums. Uh, no instrumentation or there's like one tiny synth during the chorus but that's about it i think it's hot damn yeah it's hot damn yeah you're right i think <laughs> <laughs> but uh, going back to grinding i mean still to this day people are trying to emulate this cadence and rhythm that the drums have yeah. it's very uh I think it's very marching band military, don't you find? With a hint of uh, tribal, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very war type drums. I see like a college, uh, college marching band playing that. 
like easily. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. I've never seen it that uh, from that angle, yeah. but uh, it has this uh, very bodily uh, movement uh, rhythm to it. Like you can really feel like your shoulders will get into it, and then your head, and then your hips, and it's it's really. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was very, very, very different when it came out. Yeah. And I think it still influences, like I, I've i seen some videos of Kenny Beats, uh, uh, his series on YouTube, and he's often trying to emulate that drum pattern. Mm. So I was really, I, I was fascinated that even the kids, uh, <laughs> I'll allow myself to, to see a Kenny Beats as a kid. Um, but yeah, so grinding for me was just like, what? You can't do that. You yeah. can't not play chords or have a bass line uh, uh, in there to make it a beat, you yeah. know, but they did it and yeah. it, it worked. And yeah. it, just like Drop It Like It's Hot, it became like a, a huge club banger just yeah. because of the... Because it's, it was so different. It's so different. And then they, they understand how to move your body, not to, not to have this uh, weak pun with the Justin Timberlake kid incredible track but uh yeah let's uh let's let's talk about what made this duo uh what made their magic in the studio and the way they work together how do you see their roles in terms of uh, production and songwriting um well as we know uh pharrell was mostly oriented towards the the, the vocal and the vocal hooks i think that was his job uh finding the chords um, they were also working with, um, I think, a, a great engineer uh, from a, well their studio because basically the hovercraft studio they 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 have in Virginia was an old studio that went bankrupt that they they just bought back, and the en right. and the engineer came with it, and <laughs> uh, Andrew Coleman that's his name. So okay, I've never heard of that guy. So uh, you should check him out. He there's a great article in the Sound on Sound about him, oh, and he for sure for sure he talks about all the the different gear and everything that he he basically used for uh, with the Neptunes, and uh, so pretty much Andrew Coleman was in charge of every, everything technical. Uh, Pharrell mostly uh, the chords, uh, the keyboards, uh, the voice hooks, and uh, Chad was pretty much doing the the final mixes. Uh, for the tracks, uh, final arrangements, and, and added that that little that little bit of magic uh, that you were talking about earlier that's missing from Pharrell's work right now. Um, that what for me is what made it the Neptunes that like syncopated like those drums, um, mostly like where the cut, um, how to loop those bars. Um, also, Pharrell uh, probably got the drum duties because he's a drummer uh, from the get-go. So pretty much like, I think they they used to take uh, live drums and then they would just like chop up uh, like a 16 bar loop or into smaller loops uh, to get uh, everything that they needed for the tracks. I think that was the, the, main, the main way they worked. Right. Back in the day, I heard that those uh, famous high-pitched snares that they had, and even the, the the like the huge kicks, like almost tribal kicks, mm -hmm. were actually stock ASR10 drum sounds. Oh yeah, okay, well, yeah, okay, they just yeah. So I w always searched and scoured the internet trying to find someone who had sampled. The these uh, these so these sounds, and I I, I never did find okay. the uh, original source material, but uh, apparently those were uh, ASR ten. It was a very a very popular popular sampler uh, sampler rompler, however you want to call it. Yeah, has a has kind of a soul of its own. Yeah, with kinda. those uh, effects we've already talked about in the. Timbaland episode. Yeah, exactly. So for you out there, if you haven't, you better go back to our Timbaland episode for us to and check kick out. a little bit of uh, knowledge about this incredible keyboard that is the ASR10. We've never owned one, but we uh, we certainly have uh, heard about it. <laughs> heard some uh, legends about the uh, 
the ASR. Right? I mean, obviously, um, you can definitely hear everything that each of the members of the Neptunes do uh, on the tracks. You mentioned Pharrell's weird seventh chords. Uh, he has a very uh, unorthodox way of putting chord progressions together. And mm. that's, I think, what made uh, some of the, the, the quirkiness and, and, and weirdness of the Neptune sound. But then you also have kind of a rock attitude to both of them. Uh, if you listen, obviously, to the NERD work, uh, it's, it, it's very obvious. But even on some of the records that where, where Chad is more involved, there's going to be more, you know, uh, electric guitars, live basses and stuff like that. And, yeah. uh, True. I mean, they kind of have that punk, almost rebel attitude towards hip hop, which I really uh, enjoyed when, back, in, back in the day when, when, when Chad brought that flavor. And, um, I mean, for me, I, I, I'm still stuck in the whole justified era. I mean, to me, uh, rock your body. I think I said move your body earlier in the, <laughs> in the episode, but it's rock your body. And then Senorita, for me, were, were absolute masterpieces. Yeah. And they, they, they really both capture, you know, the, like the, the, the weirdness of the unresolving chords of Cha um, Pharrell, but with all of the instrumentation, yeah. lushness, if you will, of Chad. True, that's very true. So, also, Chad, uh, I think he introduced also the, how can I call it, the spaciness, uh, lasery, uh, those, so those 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 space weapon sounds and in, in their sound i think it's it's very obvious that chad used a lot of the arterial stuff and the arp2 2600 and all those those old synth old, old recreation of synth and the the big moog modulars recreation i think he used those a lot just to add like sprinkle a touch of effects here and there and uh, just to 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 make the sound the raw sound the rock raw sound even more uh, like out of this world. That's my impression. Yeah. Mm. I, well, I mean, they, they obviously like us uh, are big like sci-fi buffs, and you could tell that they've uh, they've wanted forever to emulate like the the sound of the the soundtracks for these tacky yeah. uh, late seventies and early eighties show. Yeah, I think it, it's not a coincidence that their label is called Star Trek. Right. right, 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 right. So, I'm more of a Star Wars than a Star Trek fan, but uh, I'll allow it. They, they, uh, they, they have a strong brand with this whole uh, alieny, spacey vibe. Like they really, really build something totally different. Yeah, and, um, the, and you can see it even in, if you listen to like Missy Elliott stuff. You can see how they 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 all influenced each other. Like if you listen to like Missy stuff, like arpeggiated stuff from from her albums, and even even the Timbo stuff, I think you realize how there's a there's like this link between these producers and these artists because they're basically all from Virginia, right? I think Missy well, you, Timbo. The Neptunes, they're all from Virginia. And the, there was a time when they pretty much like networked there before everyone got so big and they went like, and everyone was working in LA and New York. But there was a time when like Virginia had this special, this special something that there was a lot of great talent that was coming from there. Oh yeah, for sure. There was something in the water, yeah. as they say. Did you know that, uh, I, I mean... It's pretty much common knowledge now, but did you know that they were actually in a band together? Timbo, Pharrell, Chad, uh, Magoo. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the, I guess it was the the late 80s or something, uh, the group was called Surrounded by Idiots, oh. SBI. <laughs> and there's actually a full 
like demo album that's available on YouTube if you want to hear what they were they sounded like back then. Wow. And uh yeah, that's you can already tell especially there's this one song at the towards the end of the record and it you can actually tell that Timbaland already had the same sound like 30 years ago that yeah. he has even today even and today. it's uh, it's it's quite remarkable actually. Whereas Pharrell was more trying to be like this back, backpacker uh, Q-tip type rapper. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think he was really fascinated by the tri a tribe called Quest, uh, and obviously, you could also tell that they they were stronger on the uh, production side of things. Uh, I mean, uh, Magoo was already the same rapper, but the other guys they were very. Uh, it sounds like us when we tried to to become rappers like uh, 30, 30 years ago. <laughs> like it's, uh, I'm pretty sure they're a little embarrassed uh, with their rhyme skills. Uh, it's a, but I mean, it's uh you could also tell that they were really, really creative and talented for sure. Yeah, true. All right. So that's, um, that's the episode for today. Uh, I think great that's, talk, uh, great talk. The, I, I think that the Neptunes, uh, I can, I actually heard that Chad is back in the picture for 2020. They're they're going to be ta um, working on some Jay Z stuff, uh, amongst other um, high profile uh, projects. I thought he retired. So, uh, Didn't he retire? Well, so the whole story about the retirement thing, uh, and again, it goes back to what I was trying to figure out at the beginning of the episode, where uh, I mean, Chad is going through something. I don't think he's just uh, tired or disgusted by the music industry. I think that uh, he he is uh, facing some challenges and some um, health, mental health issues, I think. Uh, and it's very, very un unfortunate. Maybe it was a stroke uh, because of the slurred speech patterns that he, ha he seems to exhibit in uh, more recent interviews. But basically what I'm trying to say is in 2017, when he sent out that tweet where he said uh, he was retiring, uh, his PR agent or, or, or manager, I don't know, came out and said it was just a, a bad joke. He's not retired, this, that. And uh, so who knows? Who knows? If anyone uh, listening to this have any information, uh, I'm all ears because he's my favorite Neptunes and I'm, I hope that he's okay and uh, that he can come back stronger than ever to to deliver the musical genius he was blessed with uh, for sure yeah of course so i can't wait to hear if they can bring the magic back because like you said i mean for for uh for more than a decade they were uh, inhuman yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 and to finish it off i have a question for you uh, we talked about the most uh, like out there track, the most uh, like innovative track out there. What's your favorite track of the Neptunes? So there's a lot of sleepers. Um, there's a lot of Busta Rhymes stuff, like obscure remix uh, that I like, but I, I'm going to go very, very uh, top 40 with you here. And I'll, I'm going to say Rock Your Body for me is the... Okay, by far okay. the best it's a it's a good choice it's got a great great bass line i have to admit yeah yeah true what about those drums too yeah. they they didn't have a whole lot of well they had live drums but not on their more pop stuff as yeah. much and so in there you have incredible i guess pharrell played the drums uh not sure yeah. who played what but the 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 drums sound great. The bass, the bass line is awesome. I've, the arrangement, like that, that album is pretty much top notch for me. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. What yeah, about you? Sure. Uh, like you said, there's many, many golden nuggets in there. Um, I'm gonna go out of the box and I'm gonna say, "Hella good, no doubt." Oh, okay, on the, okay. On the Rocksteady album. Yeah, 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 yeah. The more for uh, me, that's, N -E -R -D yeah, sounding for stuff. me that song. Whoa, it's like it's uh, it has this this magic to it, and Tony Canal on the bass, and the, the drums are kicking, and it's super simple, but it's got that 
that NERD flair, like what could no doubt do to reinvent themselves like at that period? Hella good is is that track. It's like the first track, boom, in your face. Oh yeah, for sure. And actually I would I would uh, probably think that this was written more by Chad again. Yes. Like it for me the everything no doubt and even uh, Gwen Stefani's uh like uh solo stuff it sounds like a lot of Chad's uh, keyboard ideas and 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 guitar ideas. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Okay, so like you mean like Hollaback Girl and the stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'll uh well especially the chords during like the 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 post chorus or or break in Hollaback cuz Hollaback also has that that Pharrell drum energy obviously. I'll I'll, I'll throw some honorable mentions because I was looking at my um my notes here and I think that uh people out there who don't know the Neptunes who haven't grown up listening to the Neptunes like we did should listen to I Just Want to Love You by Jay-Z. I think that's that for me is the ultimate R&B hip hop club sound of the Neptunes. Like the bass line in there is just so yeah. mm. different. Yeah. It's incredible. And sure. obviously it's one of uh, Pharrell's best hooks to date. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even sing that high. And then second honorable mention, LL Cool J, Love You Better with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, that one was really, really cool with the, the Cork Triton flanged up strings in their sound. That was just really, really cool for me. Yeah, true. Well, if, you're, if we're going to honorable mention, that's, I'll, I have also two. I'm going to say if we're talking about Jay-Z, I'm gonna go with front Fronten. For me, Fronten was a a very uh, it's very out there. I think it's on Clones, uh, the uh, the album, the Neptune's album that featured um, many of the artists that were on their labels. I think right, right, and I, yeah, maybe it was. Wasn't it released as a as a Pharrell single also? Like as uh, a could be, but. Uh, I think it was on Neptune's uh, Neptune's present uh, clones. I think, and also, uh, I have to mention for me one also a track that's very, um, very different and had that special that that, that special pump in and club dance floor club to it with that, like it makes you want to dance tra- type of track. I'm gonna have to mention "I'm a Slave for You" by Britney Spears. That's also pretty. Uh, very Neptunian in my book. Oh, for sure. I mean, I was a, I was a kind of a hater when it was released because I, I, I was like, why did they work with her? But uh, I have to say, uh, it's a, it's an amazingly uh, well produced track. It's very, very, very well produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great picks, great picks, Beak. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's so much, there's so much to 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 discover with their discography it's oh yeah it's impressive mind-boggling very impressive all right so um good talk uh, yeah. my my dude yes sir. let's uh let's remind our audience that uh they can listen to the older episodes yeah they, either on spotify apple podcasts yeah. youtube you name it we're we're on there yeah don't forget to subscribe also to uh the podcast and also the newsletter on the delicatebeats.com and also catch us on um, all the medias out there on Facebook, on Instagram, and uh, check uh, check our store also on the Delicate Beat store. Um, get some amazing uh, serum presets and also some great contact uh, contact instrument for your next production. Uh huh. So, quick question for you before yeah. we go. Yes, sir. Why why should people subscribe to our newsletter? Because everybody has a newsletter. What's different with ours? Well, this is subscribe to our newsletter because I'm going to dare to say that we have some great, great content uh, on the YouTube channel. So you're going to be first to hear about uh, the content that we're putting out. Also, you're going to be first to hear when we launch new products. 
And usually, if you're subscribed to the newsletter, you can even get uh, some very good pricing on our products when we launch uh, the new products on the site. I, 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 yes, that's all very true and, and, and nice, but I've heard that you also give away a lot of the stuff that you've worked on, uh, whether it be serum presets, 808s, trap loops, drums, uh, I think that there's a worth, like a month's worth of free sounds in there once you subscribe. Is that true? Or is that um, just hearsay? I don't know. It might be a rumor, but it might, mm. it might be a rumor that's going to be, uh, that's going to become true in the future. Oh, so they, they, they need to check it out to, yeah. to make sure that, uh, yeah. if they, if they want to make sure if it's true or not, they should subscribe and they should go see if, uh, those uh-huh. free sample pack are already available. And maybe even get at the end of that month a mystery gift. Oh, mystery yeah. gift it is. I think I think I'm gonna subscribe myself to go see what that mystery gift is, and to remind yourself of the incredible sound design that you've been doing for the past. Indeed, for the past no, forever, like ten years. forever. <laughs> exactly. All right, so big. Uh, on, the beha- on behalf of your godson, Oscar, and myself, I wish you a very, very good uh, Easter Sunday. Perfect. The same to you. And uh, we're going to say to everyone, stay safe, stay home, uh, eat some chocolate, make that music, and we're going to see you next week. See y'all next week. Peace out. Peace. Peace.